Now, the thing is that I did tell you that, uh, you know, the thing about the sound files and so on and so forth, you can actually do this. And there are colleagues of mine that do this all the time, and I don't completely understand them. I could appreciate this. So if you're there working within LIGO and you want to work on the machine, and I'm an experimenter, so I, I work on the machine a lot, they kind of thing. They pride themselves on, on trying to understand how the machine works by essentially plugging themselves in with headphones. They put the headphones on and they listen to how the machine behaves. Okay, they listen to it. They convert. They essentially send this to speakers. Okay, and they are able to send uh, to to listen to music if you want. Music. Well, it's a tone. Okay, it's supposed to be a tone, and, and all of this is noise. So a lot of the time they all only listen to noise. They listen to noise and they're trying to understand how the machine is behaving just by listening to it. That's awesome. Now, a gravitational wave passes, you can also do that. And you can listen to the kind of sound that you know, the gravitational wave actually comes out. This, these machines can be thought of as ginormous microphones. No sounds are emitted in, in the universe, okay, no sounds. But you can think uh, of these machines as giant, you know, uh, giant microphones. You know, the ones they listen to noises mm, created by cataclysmic, cataclysmic events. If you send this uh, to speakers, it actually has some music. And I actually have it here, a sound <laughs> file. That I'm going to, the speakers, we, then it's not connected to the speakers, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do the sound. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, there's a lot, I'm very accustomed to doing this because I lived with the machine you know, for a long time and so I know how the machine behaves and so on. So the first thing you do is if you were to put headphones on, you listen to the machine, all you do, Leo, if maybe, maybe you can just launch it. It's, very, it's silent, it doesn't have any sound. Uh, so these are the waveforms and sounds are supposed to come here. So when the machine is quiet, and there's nothing going on. It's just like a microphone picking up nothing. So when a microphone picks up nothing, it's just noise. So you hear a shh, a rumbling. Honestly, if I can share this with you, the rumbling is actually all of my career. <laughs> <laughs> I, myself, and other colleagues, all we did was listen to the rumbling and try to understand where the rumbling coming from, what can it do in order to decrease it. Essentially, they spend a lot of time on doing this stuff. Okay, great. Gravitational wave comes along. The gravitational wave corresponding to this particular signal, okay, has a distinct uh, sound. It's a distinct sound. It, if I were to play the first round that I'm going to play, is simply you hear the rumbling, and all of a sudden you hear. That's the culmination of my career. Very <laughs> <laughs> soft, it's extremely fast. You're like, what? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> so in order to appreciate what the boop was, what you have to do is you have to zoom in and slow things down. If you slow things down, because if you paid attention to the scales or the numbers that I showed you before, um, the, that sound pattern sounds like a so-called a chirp signal. It's a tone, and it goes on like this. And it gives you an idea. Now, if you think in terms of physics, or astrophysics, it actually gives you an idea what these two black holes were doing. Because in order to generate a like this, it put things in perspective. These are massive black holes far, far away they are opening out each other, coalescing to form a third, and it happened in an instant of a second. That makes you think. You have to, in order to listen to the chirp, we actually have to slow it down. Slow it down. Um, we had other surprises when we turned the machine on, and LIGO, when it at first turned on, actually, we were just. Uh, LIGO had different phases. This machine had different phases. Okay. The first, um, this is the second phase, the second upgrade called Advanced LIGO. We were running for just four months. We were just warming up the, the machine and it was not running at optimum sensitivity. It was not. You flip the switch, you turn the machine on, 
two days later, you have this blip, okay? And we were, as I was sharing before, we were all in shock when this happened. It was very loud to the point that we had to inspect it, so we had a confirmation, right? And that was a big deal, and that was all the headlines that you saw. The thing is that four months, we were running for four months, we are so accustomed to nothing, that kind of thing. Four months, at the end of the month, December 26, 2015, another one comes, very loud as well, a second one. This didn't make headline news, it did for us, because we're like, oh my goodness, we saw another one. No doubt, no doubt. This guy consisted also of two black holes orbiting around each other. The masses were different, the way that they were to rotating was different also. Truly, again, we were in shock, actually, sifting through the data, after the run was done, it was over with, we discovered a third one, which we did not declare detection because it was loud, but not loud enough for detection. It was present. It was awfully close. So if, I, if you will, a candidate event. If you were to pretend that there was detection, okay, and you compute the masses, but well, those masses were similar to the masses of black holes that we discovered before. Right. Um, so, um, <laughs> so for us, we were uh, we were not only in shock because gravitational waves were, were preserved, we were in shock also because there was two black holes orbiting around each other. What? Okay. And then the thing is that these signals kept popping up, and the machine is not optimized. The machine is like running well running okay, but it's not running as well as we, it's supposed to run. We need more time to work on the machine to, to make sure that it's running well. So we expect a lot more of these signals once LIGO you know, brings down its noise level down further, it's even more stable and things of that, of that nature. Let's see. Uh, the, last, the last slide that I'd like to show you is uh, these are the general, these are the black holes that uh, we know exist. From X-ray studies, we know that the black holes have a mass that range from, I don't know, five solar masses to almost 30. And LIGO mm -hmm. now keeps discovering these binary systems consisting of black holes whose masses, I mean, the one that we registered, the one that I talked about today <coughs> is this guy here, where at the end we have a whopping 60 solar mass black hole in the mix that was not, not really observed before. So this discovery of gravitational waves is a big deal because it actually does open up the universe to another way of observing it, which is not optical anymore, uh, which complements all the optical studies with something else. Okay, detection of gravitational waves um, is almost as if uh, before we had eyes, now we had eyes and ears uh, to observe the 